get started creating a new schedule. To start a new one, select New from the File pull-down menu, or click on the New button. The New Schedule dialog box will appear. Double-click on the type of display for the new schedule, or highlight the display type and click OK, so that a new blank schedule is opened in the Schedule Studio. The first thing you need to do is choose the type of event. So once you've started a new schedule, click on None in the Type field of the first entry. Click on the down arrow and a menu of three options will appear. Select Message for this example to open the Open Message dialog box. Click on the plus sign to select the folder from which you want to open the message. Highlight the name of the message of your choice and click Open. The message will show in the event field of the schedule screen. What we'll do next is add to this message a start and a stop time. Click in the Start Time field. Highlight the digit to be changed, either the hour or the minutes, and enter the desired number. For instance, 8, either using the keyboard or clicking on the up and down arrows. Finally, highlight the AM PM field and select AM. Let's have a look now at the first and last date fields. You will notice again that by default, the first date shows the current day and the last date shows the last day of the current year. Also consider that the first date must be earlier in the year than the last date or the event will not run. To set the first and last date, click on the digit to be changed in the first date field. Enter the current date either using the keyboard or clicking on the down arrow for a calendar to pop up. Once the pop-up calendar appears, you can either click the date on the current month or use the left and right arrows to move to a previous or a later month. Or, you can right-click anywhere in the calendar and a Go to Today button will appear. If you click on it, you will automatically set the field on the current date. Finally, see that all days of the week are selected by default too. If you do not want to run the message on a certain day or days of the week, click on the box to inactivate that particular day. We're now going to add to this schedule three more messages so that we can go over other features of the Schedule Studio. Let's go over then the steps we followed before. Add another line or entry by clicking on the yellow plus sign. Select Message from the Type field. Set the start and stop time you wish, and then set the start and stop date. Finally, select which days of the week you want the message to run on. Let's add another message. This time, we'll choose the date and time message. We'll adjust the start and stop time and date. and then we'll select the days of the week. Finally, we'll add our fourth and last message in the same way. Let's select now the welcome message. Apply the start and stop time and date. Then, select the days of the week, and our schedule is now ready. Now, when you click on an entry number, below the toolbar you'll see a description of that particular message. We'll now move on to describing the schedule we created. Click in the Description field and type the description for the schedule to identify it from other similar ones. This description does not change if the events change. 
The schedule description will be visible in the Open Schedule dialog box when you wish to open an existing schedule. Let's say we describe our sample schedule as Summer 06. Next, we need to name and save the schedule so that you can access it if you wish to edit, reread, or print it. Click on the File menu and select Save. The Save Schedule dialog box will appear. For this example, we'll select the default folder. Then, enter the schedule name Schedule 1 in the File Name box on the right side of the dialog box. Finally, click on Save. 